Hey guys, welcome back. Um, today's episode is about putting the gearbox back together again for the Mexi. Um, I was hoping to split the body off the chassis uh, and do the repairs and so on he's doing. I still need to do that, but at the moment it's got no gearbox, no wheels, and it's taking up the lift. Race season's coming soon and I need to get this thing on the lift so that I can get some work done on it, get it ready for racing. So, in the last episode, I took the gearbox apart, took the axle tubes off it, this time put it back together again with new gaskets so that there's no leaks and get it back on so we can get the wheels back on and get the Mexi there off the lift. Okay, if you watched the last video on how to take this apart, you'll remember that the axle sits in there with these little fulcrum plates that sit either side, but if you put them in there, they will have a tendency to fall down. So a little trick is just to put a smear of grease on the back of them and that will just make them stick to the sides and hold themselves in place so that you can get the actual shaft itself in. So loosen that one. There we go. So now, wipe the grease off my hands. The axle shaft itself needs to sit in between the two plates, like so. Like that, nice and easy. Just move them apart if we want, it wasn't quite all the way down. There we go, that's it, all the way in. So now, if we recall, this washer, this one over there, about clean on one side, dirty on the other side, or blackened on the other side. The black side is the side that goes on top. And don't forget, it's got that little pip on it there, which sits in the little recess there. So feed that on over the shaft, and down into place. And then the circlip again. I don't think it matters really, but that's the side that was face down. That's the side that was face up. You can just tell the uh, the witness marks on it there from where it's been exposed to the hot oil and whatnot. Bang that on there. Circlip pliers squeezed together. This is where you need an extra pair of hands. Or rest it on your head. <laughs> Squeeze that together. And in it goes. And that's it. Axle shaft is in. Now put this cover plate back on. Then the plastic daisy. And then the smaller side plate with a couple of gaskets. Um, so that we can get the drag right. And make sure the... Uh, the axle tube itself is, is fitted correctly. So I'll just pause the camera while I get set up for that and then we'll move on to that one. Okay, we've got the bits and pieces together so now it's time to put this side plate back on. This is obviously the bigger of the two side plates. On these Mexis there is an O-ring in that seal there, in that flange. Um, I think it's different on earlier bugs uh, but so yours may be different to this. But I've checked the O-ring, it's in good condition, and that flange is all nice and clean, uh, so that can go back on. This will only go one way, and that sort of bulge there is at the top, with these little tabs, one there and one there, at 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock. So, feed that on, line it up with the studs that are already there, and just give it a gentle tap into place.
Okay. Let's stick the nuts back on it. And the washers, of course. Two from before and there. And there. there. And then the nuts. Those face spring washers. And then my fancy new tool. Tie them all up. All nice and tight. Next comes the plastic daisy. It sits on there and sort of locates in the center there. Right, that's that. The next is the actual tube itself. Right, got them. When I took this all apart, there were two of these gaskets in each side. And the instructions that you're supposed to follow are to measure the thickness of these with a micrometer um, and replace them for the same thickness because it's important. They're not just gaskets, they're spaces as well. However, the ones that I took off were all squashed and, uh, and damaged. So I don't think measuring them is a particularly accurate way of, of doing this. So I've got four. I'm going to stick two on and see how it goes. So careful not to rip them. Line it up with the bolts. One, two. There we go. And then the axle tube itself goes through the axle. Like so. And the cover plate lines up there. Now the idea is that when these bolts are torqued up, or tightened up, there will just be a small amount of drag on this. At the moment, there's absolutely no drag on it at all. And in fact, it moves. So I don't think that's going to be right. But what I'm going to do is go and get the nuts and then uh, see how that goes. Right, we've got all those out with the parts cleaner. Put them all back on. Washers first. Way too tight, or not? That feels way too tight now. Uh, okay, I take that apart, put one gasket in instead, see how that goes. B 
because there's a lot of resistance there. It's, it's really difficult to move that, so that's not right. It says in the Haynes manual there should be a slight amount of drag, but that's way, way too much. I'll pop these off. When I said put one gasket in there, I did of course mean one more gasket in there. So now there are three. Which means I probably won't have enough to do the other side. But, oh well. Get some more orders. Uh, put the tube back on again. There we go. Line it up. And once more, nuts and washers. freely okay I think that's all good all that remains to do with this side now is to paint it and put the boot back on uh, just a note on those boots though uh, they are the split kind with sort of half a dozen little screws that hold them together they should go with the joint horizontal so that would be at three o'clock or nine o'clock if you put the joint at 6 o'clock down here, or 12 o'clock up here, the axle tube moves this way during the normal suspension travel. And putting it this way will force the joint open and leak. Similarly at the top, it will force the joint open. It won't leak because it's at the top, but it might let dirt fall in while it's open. So it's better to put it either 3 o'clock or 9 o'clock. But that is this side done now. Um, the wheel bearing needs to go back together, so I'll reposition the camera and just show you what to do there. And then I think we'll call it a night on this one. These are the wheel bearing components now. Um, it's easier to show you how they go together whilst it's off the car like this. So first of all is this little spacer here. And if you look at it carefully, you can see it's chamfered on, on one end and internally it's beveled. Okay, that goes on that side to the gearbox. So the beveled edge here sits on the, uh, the axle shaft itself. So that goes that way. Next is the wheel bearing that pushes on. Pushes on open side and then that side just got a seal on so it's going to go on that way so for the purposes of this just so that you know the gearbox is he worry, here and the road wheel is this side here so that one first then the bearing and then a little flat washer and then oops this o-ring and then this spacer, which is shaped again, and it goes that way on. So this side here touches the bearing, that side there faces the wheel. And then the cover plate here. This one's got a little drain at the bottom, so it's important to make sure that's nice and clear. That one is, I've blown it out with some compressed air. So in there goes the washer that comes with the seal kit and it falls right through, not a problem. The new seal it pushes into there and the o-ring that sits in there. And then of course, finally, the gasket goes on. Now these gaskets have got a little um, cut out there for that drain that hasn't been removed. So you have to remember to just undo that. Okay, put it all back in the car. First piece to go on is this. Don't forget, 
we've got a beveled edge inside here and a chamfered edge on top. It goes in with the beveled edge on the end of the tube and then the actual shaft rather, like so. Next is the wheel bearing. That's just going to need tapping down a little bit, just very gently, doesn't need much. In fact, if you hit it too much, you'll damage something inside the gearbox, so don't do that. It's going slowly, just need something to sit around there. Right, doing it that way is not ideal, but it gets the job done and I was very careful not to hit it too hard. So next comes this washer, that washer goes on there, like so, well, set that down. Uh, next is this rubber seal, this is just an o-ring. doesn't want to fit. Number nine, ceiling ring. Hmm. I don't know if you can see that, but this this ceiling ring here that came in the kit is got loads of moulding flash and whatnot on it. So I'm just gonna clean that up it off with a knife. You can see how, how badly made that is. So I will just clean that up, pause the camera while I do that and then come back. Just putting this together. Um, I've decided to use the old um, oil deflector. It's called because pull us down. Oops, we decided to use the old oil deflector because the new one that came with the kit is quite a bit smaller, and it actually falls through the hole in the front of the um, of the cover plate. You see the difference there. So that's no use. Bin that. Use the old one which I've just cleaned up. So that goes into the cover plate first, just goes in there, it's a loose fit because it fits on the end of the axle so it doesn't really matter, but you need to put that in before you put the seal in. Now I've just put some oil on the seal and on the actual side of the thing there because that needs to press in. I think this is going to be a two-handed job so I'll do it away from the camera. Right, got it started, it seems to be just pushing in under thumb pressure. So we'll just push it in. There is a little um, lip inside that it needs to sit on. I don't know if you can just see it there, probably not, probably can't. But it's not in far enough yet. So a little bit more. Push. 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 I think I'll just give it a little tap with the hammer. Right, that's all the way in now. If it's not quite all the way in, when I put the drum back on and tighten this nut up, 
that'll push it all the way home so that's all good so all that remains now is to put this big o-ring on there these two hands like so and then a couple of gaskets remembering to put the little cutouts at the bottom which is where the oil drain goes in fact should have put the gaskets on first I'll tear that off put the gasket on there it's difficult left handed there we go and then another one remember that the brake backing plate needs to go on here as well when it goes back in the car so this isn't exactly how it's going to be when it's finished put the o-ring seal in there and stick the whole caboodle on to there that pushes against the bearing like so and it clicks into place and then all that remains is these four bolts one there whoops nearly went one there one there and that one there And that's it. If you got this far, you'll know how to put the brake blacking plates back on, rebuild the brakes and so on. So I need to do the other side of the gearbox now and then get it back up in the car. But that will have to wait for another episode. Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, if you found this useful, click subscribe, click the little bell, whatever that does. And uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers, bye.